Okay. All right, guys, let's talk about completing the square. So I guess this video is going to be helping you prepare for the upcoming set of tests that we have next class, especially those of you who are interested in getting a grade that's like an A, you know. And of course, these are lower level um, skills, but the lower level skills are necessary in order to do the higher level problems. So in this case, it's completing the square. Now we got to remember why we want to do completing the square. The reason that completing the square is important to us is because, like, if I give you, let me go ahead and change the color of this. No, you know, I'll leave it red. Red is cool. So let's say I give you this. You can solve that. The reason you can solve that is because you're just going to take the square root of both sides. And then this is going to be x minus 1 equals plus or minus 2. And then you solve that. It ends up being this. All right, it's either going to be 3 or negative 1. Got it. Now, why, as so you see here, this guy here means this. And so if you expand this, you, if you do go through the foil there, it looks like that. Now, every single, this is called a binomial. Okay. And it's a binomial that's squared. And every time you have a binomial squared, it does that. Like, let's say, let's say I write the following. If you if you follow that, you get x squared minus sixteen minus eight x sorry plus sixteen. You know everything, and obviously you can use that to solve, right? What you notice is half of negative eight is negative four, and negative four squared is sixteen. For the negative two, the the one here for this one, half of negative two is negative one. Negative one squared is one. That's just how it works out. Every time, every time, like if I do this one, x minus uh, plus three squared. If you follow this, you get x squared plus six x plus nine. Half of six is three, three squared is nine. I can work with this and square root stuff to solve, to solve quadratics. Now, if I, if I gave you x squared plus four x equals to 10, uh, how do you solve that? You don't. You don't know how to solve it. You start playing around with it. I remember like early on in algebra, like if I would try to solve that with a, some basic skills, I would factor and then I'm stuck. Now, if it were set equal to zero, I could solve it. But like, that's the whole point. We said, you know, you can't solve it like that. But, but, and here's the key. And, and to see this, you probably have to see the video of this. So I ask you, what's half of four? You say half of four is two. And what's two squared? It's four. So if I go like this, x squared plus four x, and I add four here, then because I added four to one side of my equation, I have to add four to the other. So now instead I have 14 on the other side, but now I can just rewrite this as x plus two squared. And now I can solve that. All I did was rewrite, rewrite this into this. And the reason I was allowed to do that is because the moment I added that four to the left side and added to the other side, I didn't change what the equation meant. I just changed how it looked. And I did it so I can take advantage of that square rooting of that binomial so I can solve it. Because right now I can solve this. I can just say, take the square root of both sides, right? And so x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 14. And so x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 14. Two answers. That's why I'm doing this. By me doing this with letters, I showed you how we come up with the quadratic formula. Yes.
Oh wow! If if you if I tell you just to give me completed a square form or verdicts form, then just yeah, just use it as a squared you know verdicts form. If you have to solve, I say solve. Solve. Well, let me just, let me write it out so I can answer your questions and and if I know exactly. Okay, so the way I learned this, and I'll wait because some people are writing. I want to erase this. I learned this as I they called it verdicts form. So when the teacher taught this to us, they taught completely the square, and then they went, oh, this by the way, this is called verdict. They didn't ever call. They never called it completed square form. They called it verdicts form. And the reason we have verdicts form was because we found the verdicts of the parabola. Right? So when I ask you this in the test, it will be clear to you because I'm going to ask you, hey, do complete the square form. Completed square form looks a certain way. I'll wait because some people are still writing. I don't want to erase the stuff. And they're like, oh, he erased it. But here's the thing. Look, look, I erased it. Oh, I erased it. No, I didn't. Oh, so smart. Don't it's you guys... Not like, it's not like the animal wood, so. <laughs> Don't you guys want to buy a Microsoft Surface like me? Oh, my God. Here we go again. Yeah, I'm more of a bad person. I see. I understand. Some people are defective. All right, I got to erase it now because I got to see if I can cover something before lunch. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, take a picture of it. Bro, the insulin works. Like, the insulin, I put on 10 pounds in a week with insulin. It's incredible. So, diabetes is a thing. When a doctor tells you you have diabetes, listen to him. When he tells you you have celiac disease and you can't eat gluten, listen to him. Yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, so let's begin. So to answer your question, Desiree, when complete the squared form is the same thing as, as vertex form, it looks like this. It's y equals to a times x minus h squared plus k. And this allows us to answer the following question. The vertex here is always, you know, h comma k. What it is. Well, yeah, when you set y equals to zero, now we know we're going to solve something. No, because x minus h equals to zero, x equals to h. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We always like. Ah, so watch, let's talk about it. So if h were like this, right? then x would be three. But if h were like this, then x would be negative three. It's always the opposite. But the k is always whatever it is. Okay, so let's start with 4a. We're doing completing the square. And we're doing completing the square, we're going to write it in completing the square form, which is also called vertex form. So we have y equals to x squared plus 2x plus 2. So I told you, this is the way I learned it. I subtracted always 2 equals to x squared plus 2x. Then I ask you, what's half of 2? And you would say 1. And then what's 1 squared? 1. So I have y minus 2 equals to x squared plus 2x plus one. But if I add one to one side of the equation, I have to add one to the other side. So I have y minus one equals two. And now this may be written as x plus one squared. And now I just add the one over. And I have completed the square form. Right there. Right there, in one tool, I have access to everything. 
I can make a comment right there about the verdicts. The verdicts there is obviously negative one comma one. If I set y equals to zero, I can solve it. I mean, I don't like the solution, but I can solve it. Is that difficult? I don't think so. All right, let's try another one. But let's try one that looks more difficult. For example, which one do you want me to do? E looks interesting, but it's super easy. But let's do it. You want uh, G is better. I like that better. So let's try G. So in the case of G, so this is G, we have 3x squared. I'm going to write it as y equals 2. I always like writing that way because that's the way I was taught. But it's up to you. I, I can do it another way if you like. I just don't feel like my teacher would be appreciative of that. So we have that. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3. Okay. I'm going to factor out a 3. Now, that's the important thing that we didn't do in the other one. I factor out my 3. You got to remember that. Now, I'm going to ask you a few questions. What is half of negative four? Negative two. And what's negative two squared? Four. So now, y minus three, I'll leave a space there, is three times x squared minus four x plus what? Four. If I add four to one side, what do I have to add to the other? 12, because you have three times four. You didn't add four, you added 12. So we got y plus nine. Did I take attendance? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, let me make sure. Look what I did now. You saw what I did? Yes. You know what's funny? In my mind now, like Christian's Christian's mom is is my my uh, my daughter's teacher, and my daughter had a homework, a math homework. It's always in distributive property, and I wasn't paying attention to her. You know, it was kind of like. And she was so happy about understanding it, but I'm like, bro, you don't understand it. But I should have sat down and explained to her, but I don't think she understood it. But she did understand it, but she understood it like a third grader would. But then I was like, bro, I'm not sure I understand the of property as well as I should. But there, do you see what I wrote there? What's my verdicts? What's my verdicts? Two comma negative nine. Now, if I want to solve this, I can solve this. I can set y equals to zero. When I set y equals to zero, what do I have? I have my x-intercept. My roots are my x-intercept. I, I think I think Marilyn's homework was something like this. Let me see. It was like, come on, Jimmy, think about it. Uh, seven times nine. Right? What happened? Write it down. No, when when you're done with this question, I'm just writing it because it's part of like that's it. Look, this is the answer for completed the square form. Now you can find your verdicts by looking at it, by inspecting it, or you can um, you know, you can do you can solve it. You set y equals to zero, and you solve it. Guys, look look. There's here's what my daughter's third grade homework looked like. She would have to do this. She would have to do. 7 times 10 minus 1. And then she would have to do 70 minus 7. And she would write 63. <laughs> Distributive property. And it works, right? 
in third grade. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but then sometimes she had the problem and she had like nine times, times, I don't know, three. But then she, I would tell her, Marilyn, just write it as, as three times nine. I told her, what, what property is that that lets me do that? Commutative. And then she could just write three times 10 minus one and solve it that way. We know it's 27, but it's 30 minus three, you know? And so, but I'm like, bro, just memorize, <laughs> you know? But then I'm thinking about it. I, I thought about it. I was thinking about it. And, and here's the thoughts I had, but I kept on playing World of Warcraft. Um, <laughs> She kept on bothering me. And I'm like, I felt bad about it because right now I'm teaching you guys and I'm spending more time with you guys than I spend time with her teaching. But here's the problem. When I do it, I try to teach her. She resists me every single way. Like she just resists every single extra thing I try to teach her. And she's like, no, I know it. I'm like, I, bro, I do this for a living. You know, she doesn't listen to me. But like if you have, if you have three plus one plus two and you multiply it times three, does distributed property do this completely? I think it does. So you have nine plus three plus six. Nine plus three is 12 and 12 plus six is 18. And three plus one is four plus two is six and six times three is 18. So it does work. And then you're like, but why does it work? Like if you put letters in here and you're like X times Y plus Z plus A, you're saying X, Y plus X, Z plus X, A, and that works, but like why? And so like, it's interesting when you start answering the whys is what's important. See, the, what I want you to understand is the why. The manipulation we're doing here is not interesting. I mean, it's, it's important, but if you understand why we're taking half of that middle number and squaring it, because we're trying to take advantage of a certain property we've agreed to that works to solving a certain set of problems, then that's what matters. Okay. Guys, you want me to do another one there as completed square form? We got 10 minutes before lunch. H. H, H yeah. it is. All right. So let me erase this. But I should, I hopefully, I, I'm going to spend some time with my daughters, well, specifically with Marilyn, working on her math. But, bro, she doesn't, I, I get it. It's, you know, it's my fault. It's, it's my fault. It's my fault. I should, I should do better. I will. <laughs> I got some time. I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to live, though. All right, so which one? H? You want me to do H? Yeah. All right, let's do H. Let me pick a better, a different color. Blue. So we got 4H. Now, I don't like how they wrote it. I would write it like this. This is how I would write it. This is me. Okay. So um, the first step I would do is I would subtract the 7. And and then after the 7, what, what should I do? I should take half of, I mean half. I should factor out my 4, right? There you go. Yes, very important. Negative four is a good idea to factor. So now it's going to look like this. Now I ask you, what's half? What's half? What's half of two? Yeah, it's one. And one squared is one. And so y minus 7 equals negative 4 times x squared plus 2x plus 1. What If I add 1 to one side, what do I add to the other? Negative 4. Yes, yes. Desiree, why, why do I, when you smile, does it feel like it's a real smile? <laughs> like you're happy. Why are you happy? Now look what I get to do. I get to write x plus two, x squared plus two, x plus one as x plus one squared, as a binomial squared. And so now I rewrite this as negative four times x plus one squared plus 11. 
And as a consequence, I have my completed square form done, but I can tell you what my vertex is. My vertex is negative one comma 11. I can also tell you that that graph, that parabola, it's a parabola because it's a second power, faces down. Also, if I set it equal to zero, the y, I can solve that. I can subtract the 11, divide by negative four, square root it, and subtract one. Right? If you set that equal to zero, right now, if you said zero equals negative four x plus one squared plus 11, guess what? Subtract the 11, divide by negative four, Take the square root of both sides. Subtract the one. This is the answer. If I didn't mess up, fix that. And, you know, we can, that looks like a face. Okay, the facial gestures you're making indicate to me that you're not sure what I did. So okay. let me go back. You lost me. Where you added the four. Are you good there? No, okay, here. Where? Like, why'd you add one? To, I know you added one to this side and to the top of this and then squared, but then why'd you add four to this side? I added negative four. Because Be of this? Because I didn't add one, I added four times one. Got it. Uh, no, I didn't. Huh? Oh, this other part? To show you that I can solve it if I wanted to. But I'll erase it. Oh, you want me to solve it? Oh, I got to do it all over again. Okay, so let's do it all over again. So imagine if I set this equal to zero, then I can solve it. Right? I can solve it. Subtract the 11. Divide by negative four. Square root both sides. Right? This is going to be plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2 equals x plus 1. So x equals 2. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2. All right, let's pause the recordings because we're going to get ready for lunch and we're going to continue. Now, guys, the my goal here is to make sure you understand these things because I got to ask you the harder questions where you're putting all of this together so you can get ready for the test because I would love you to be able to pass this test at the end of the year. Zoom recording. All right, so I got to press... Exit up there or whatever it says. Got it. Oh, you're supposed to be me and you can record it live. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so here's going to be your test. Your test is going to be basically testing all your skills of chapter four in one place. And so it's going to be, it's progressive. So as we go through a test, all the skills are added and piled on in a progressive way. And then that's pretty much it. So the first question might be something like this. And I ask you to uh, graph a quadratic. Um, what ways would you graph a quadratic? If I ask you to graph that, what, what are you thinking to do? Yeah, plug in numbers. Now, in this case, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two work fine. And you put negative two squared, that's four. Four times two is eight. Negative one squared, that's one. One times two is two. You get zero, you get two and eight. And then you just kind of plot this, you know? You just... You know, you plot it. So zero, zero, uh, one is one is two, negative one is two, two is eight. And this is like a quick sketch of this parabola. You see, not bad. So I think that's a very fair question. Now, by the time you get to number two, it's asking you, if I were to change the above equation, 
from 2x squared to 2x squared minus 2. So if I subtracted 2, what changes will occur to the graph above? So what you have to remember is, you know, a constant. In this case, a constant will just add it to the square term or subtracted. We'll either move it up or down. In this case, it would be a downshift of two. Some people might say a vertical shift of negative two. Essentially, what it becomes is it becomes that graph, that same graph there, but just down two. That's all it is. It's it's. It really is that one down to. That's all it is. So, so far, so good. These are questions you can answer. Everybody here can answer these questions, I think. Now, if I were to continue, and I'll wait because some people are writing. It says there, the standard form of quadratic is whatever, that. And it goes through completing the square, right? And it says that y equals ax plus b over 2a squared minus b squared minus 4ac all over 4a, where the vertex form may be ascertained. Where the vertex may be ascertained as negative b over 2a. This is the axis of symmetry. And now I give you, I give you this. Now we have y equals 2x minus 5 squared minus 4. Show all work necessary. So it says, A, would you please state the verdicts? Can somebody tell me the verdicts? How about 5 half comma negative 4? One second. So. Why is it five half comma negative four? Because what you were always supposed to do is you're, you're supposed to check what does what's inside the parentheses equal to zero. When is that equal to zero? Okay, super important to remember that. Now, when we do vertex form, we always pull out that number. That two would have been pulled out. So we always just do the opposite. So we come back to over here where we were working on some of this here, we always have this guy on the outside. So yeah, it's just in here, yeah, the vertex is negative one comma 11. But in this case over here, we got a, we got a, a little bit of extra analysis, okay? Make sense? I don't want you to forget that. Now, what would be the equation of my line of my symmetry? So since this is the vertex here, what does the vertex do? It separates the parabola into two halves, basically. It's the, it's the lowest part or the highest part of the parabola. The vertex is this guy or this guy, right? It splits it in half. So my line of symmetry is a vertical line in the middle of my parabola. So what would it be? X equals 5 over 2, and you're done. Nothing else to do. It's whatever, whatever this X value is, you set it equal to X. And that is the vertical line. Okay. Now we continue, it says, please convert the quadratic from vertex form to standard form. So if I have this looking like this, can I convert it back to its original form? And the answer is yes. All I do is I expand um, you could, but like, yeah, you could if you, you know it's five times two times two. you you would say negative five times two times two, and you just end up writing negative 20x, right? You could do that. But I, I'm just, you know, showing it. And that's it. You just got in that answer. Notice it doesn't take a long time. It does not take a long time.
Okay, so now it says, would you would you please write down the discriminant and calculate? Well, the discriminant is, is B squared minus 4AC. And so that's going to be negative 20 squared minus 4 times 4 times 21. Now, I know that negative 20 squared is 400, and then we got 21 times... Four times four negative, so it's negative three thirty six. So we got four hundred, basically minus three thirty six, and that comes out to sixty four. So the discriminant is sixty four. And then, so how many roots does that have? Well, we said if b squared minus four ac was greater than zero, it would have two real roots. If b squared minus 4ac equal to zero, it has one real root. If b squared minus 4ac was less than zero, it would have no real roots, no real roots. So in this case here, obviously it's gonna be what? It's positive, isn't it? So how many roots will it have? Two real roots. Notice there's not a lot of math going on here. It says, could you please sketch how a situation like this would look like? So a two real root situation would look something like this. This is two real roots. Okay, so back to this. If you have one real root, we refer to a one real root as a double root or repeated root. And it does something like this. It touches. It just touches once at the vertex, always at the vertex. You know? While the vertex here happened down here somewhere, these two things here, we call these here the roots. They're x-intercepts. This is a root. It's an x-intercept. When you have no real roots, so when this is, again, no real roots. It looks something like this. You do have roots, but they're complex. They're imaginary. Uh, and here in this case, you have no y-intercept. No real roots. Okay? And so my next question is, what is or are the x-intercepts? Well, we just figured out, in this case, that our discriminant said 64 on it, all right? So in order for us to figure out the, the, um, the intercepts, we need, to, we need to essentially probably do another set of uh, answers from here. But the, the easiest way would be we can, we can solve it for y equals to zero. Or right here at the vertex form, right there. You see that vertex form there? I'm just, for the kicks of it, write it out. Is it 3x? I already forgot the number. 2x, my gosh. 2x minus 5 squared. And then we have minus 4. Yeah, you, you set it equal to zero, right? Add the four over, and this looks weird here, right? And you end up with 2x squared minus five, 2x minus five squared equals to four. Then you would square root both sides, so you end up with 2x minus five equals plus or minus the square root of four. And then you just end up with, I mean, x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 4 divided by 2. And so what are your y-intercepts? It's, it's basically going to be whatever that gives you. And, you know, it's, it's basically 5 plus 2 divided by 2 and 5 minus 2 divided by 2, whatever that gives you. 5 plus 2 divided by 2 is 3 fifths. 
7 over 2, which is 3 fifths. And 5 minus 2 divided by 2 is 3 halves. So that's 1.5. So our, our, our x intercepts will be, will be 3.5 comma 0 and 7.5 comma 0. That's what it is. Oh no, don't do that. Okay. So now what about the y intercept? Well, the y intercept is when x equals zero. So it's up to you what you want to do. Like you can use um, right here, this guy. You can just go, or you can use this guy. It doesn't matter. If you put zero in there, you can solve for for your y. But I'm going to go ahead and write y equals to 4x squared minus 20x plus 21. And if you put a zero there, you know what you get for your y. What do you get for y if you put zero there? If you put zero for x there, what do you get for your y? Yeah, y is tw if x equals 0, y equals to 21. I mean, you know, I'm going to write it out for you. I shouldn't have to. but And I'm going to separate this with, like, a line here because it gets confusing. But you get 21. So that means your y-intercept, your y-intercept is 0, 21. So you have your vertex, you have your x-intercepts, you have your y-intercepts. Remember, the vertex was up here as 5 half comma negative 1 fourth. You can rewrite it as 2.5 comma negative 4. That's your vertex. So now let's continue. It says here, by the way, please write down the quadratic formula. X, yeah, y intercept is when x equals to zero. A y intercept is when y equals to zero. Since we set y equals to zero in a quadratic, we have two ways of solving it. Either we use complete the square form to solve for it, or we use quadratic formula. And so now that's what happens here. The next part is we have this. We have it in standard form. We set it the y equal to zero. Can you solve it? The answer is yes, because A equals four, B equals negative 20, C equals 21, and we put it in the formula. X equals negative of negative 20 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 squared minus four times four times 21, all divided by two times four. So x must therefore equal 20 plus or minus, and we already figured out that this in here was going to be 64 because we did it right there. That's the discriminant. And I picked a nice number for you guys, divided by 8. So then basically this is going to be x equals 20 plus 8 divided by 8 and x equals 20 minus 8 divided by 8. Well, 20 plus 8 is 28, and 28 divided by 8, well, so we have x equals 28 divided by 8, and we have x equals 12 divided by 8. Well, 4 goes into 28 seven times, you got 7 halves, and you have uh, 3 halves. The same answers that you just got, that I got here, when I solved it in H. When I solved the name, I got the same answer. Whether I solved it setting it equal to zero in the completed squared form, or I used my quadratic. I got the same answer whether I solved it setting y equals to zero in the completed squared form or the vertex form, or using the quadratic formula. Yes.
Yeah. Well, no, I did both sides. I did both sides. It's perfect. Good luck in the swim meet. Treading is hard. <laughs> All right. So I just want, you see what I'm trying to say? Take care. Good luck. So I just want to see that as this test is basically doing everything progressing. You got to know everything. And I says, could you please graph the quadratic? And the answer is yes. You know, the verdicts is 2.5 comma. It's up here somewhere. Comma negative four. Comma negative four. You know that your um, your zeros, your roots, your zeros, your roots, your x-intercept, all the same thing. That's when that's when what? When we cross the x-axis. This is what our roots are set for. When y equals a zero, well, we know it's gonna be seven halves and three halves. So it's it's uh, 3.5 comma zero and uh, 1.5 comma zero. And then we know our y-intercept, our y-intercept was uh, zero comma 21. Well, our y-intercept was just one y. -intercept. When we put x equals to zero, it came out to 21. It just crosses the y-axis. The x-axis has two spots. So let's see, let's see how it looks, how it looks, watch. You know, I mean, this is gonna be a quick sketch. Obviously this is not something, you know, that's gonna be good. But we know we have one, two, and three, and one, two, three, four, 2.5 comma, this is gonna be your verdicts. And then you know at 1.5 comma zero, there it is. And then we have 3.5 comma zero, is over here. And now unfortunately, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. The Y intercept is up here. So if I make a sketch of this, it looks like that. Now, I'm, you, you see what I'm trying to do with this test. I'm progressing slowly through each one of the concepts. As I'm explaining it now, I'm trying to iterate all the important parts. Because once you understand, once we're not talking anymore about what we're doing in terms of manipulating, which is important, which is part of it, then we can tackle the problems that we, we use these skills to solve other problems to kind of put a puzzle together and solve a problem. Just to show you um, this in decimals, since nobody wants to buy a surface. Guys, you're never gonna be as cool as I am. Think about it. You're not using what's what was the equation for what? What was the what was uh, what was the equation to this formula? Four x. Wait, let me see. I can do square here. Squared. What else? Minus twenty x. Oh my gosh! Look what I did. Wait, give me a second. Minus twenty. Oh my gosh! Why is it doing that? All right, let's try it again. Minus, there you go, 20x. Wait, what else? Plus 21? Plus 21. What's complaining about something? What's it complaining about? There, that. There we go, now it works. Okay, so let me get out of here. So now notice, look, what's the verdicts? 2.5, negative four. What are these two? 1.5, zero, 3.5, zero. And where do you think it's gonna intersect? Right there at 21. Does my sketch look like that sketch, sort of? Yay, like magic. And so now let's do the last one. 
it says convert to verdicts form. So convert to verdicts form. Tell me what's the first step. Let me pick a nice color though. Um, here, tell me what's the first step. Add the three. What's the next step? Factor the two. Now look what happens when I factor a two. You saw what I had to do to factor out the two? Look how I had to write that second number. Look how I had to write the coefficient next to the x, five halves. Because if I multiply two times five halves, I still get five. But I had to do that. Now I ask you, what is half of five halves? And you would say five fourths. And then you say five fourths squared is 25 over 16. So now you go y plus three equals two times x squared plus five half x plus 25 over 16. But if I add 25 over 16 to the right side, I have to add how much to the other? Two times 25 over 16. Very important not to forget that in reality, it's twice that. So it's gonna be two times 25 over 16, which is, you can just say 25 over eight. 25 over eight. So you add 25 over eight on this side. Now we gotta clean this up a little bit. We gotta clean it up a little bit. Um, this is gonna be this here. Let me write, do it in another color. Oh. This here is 24 plus 25 over eight, which is 49 over eight. Any question how I got that? You saw what I did? I added fractions. Chris, cross, happy face. Now over here, so now I know that this side is just 49 over eight, y plus 49 over eight. And then you have two times x plus what? Tell me what plus what? What do I write there? Five over four, yes. And then you just subtract over that. And if I ask you what the verdict was, you know what it is. It's what? Negative five fourths and negative 49 over eight. So in a nutshell, that is your chapter four test. Okay, now, I want you to take a look before I continue. Let me just actually pick a different color here. Take a look at this and um, Damn, I erased it. Did anybody copy down what I wrote? Y equals, what was it? Four times X, was it X minus uh, five half, uh, plus five halves or minus five halves, right? Did anybody write that? These two are the same. Remember that's a, that when we did the verdicts form for this, I think it's here somewhere. I'm not sure. No, because I let this is like the the verdicts form that we're doing is always this one, but this is technically verdicts form too. Okay, so 
what I want you to see is that, and this is a little bit hard to see. Here's how you do it. You do 2x minus 5 divided by 2 squared. And if, and if you wrote this like this, And then you did this. These are gone. And then you're left with. <laughs> you didn't see it? These two are the same. Notice how they are the same. The method that we're using to get the completed square form, we end up with this guy always. And we would obviously say at the vertex, there's five halves common A before. But we started with this anyways. Yet they're both equivalent. But do you see why they're equivalent? What's two times two? Here. Because if, if I wrote this like this, if I wrote 3 times 3 divided by 2 times 2 times 4, couldn't I just say 4 times 3 times 3 over 2 times 2? Isn't it the same thing? Yeah. Can't I do that? I'm allowed to. 2 times 2 is 4, right? If this is two times two, look, okay, let me make it even more straightforward. Can I, is it okay for me to write this? All right, so we started here. Do you agree? We started there, right? Do you agree with this step here? Okay, good. Do you agree that 2x minus 5 divided by 2 squared is really this? Do you agree that 2x minus 5 divided by 2 squared is really this? Okay. Do you agree that this is 4 times 2x minus 5 squared divided by 4? And do you agree that these cancel? And do you agree that this is the same as that? And it was it was worth the effort. Okay, so now we go to the last thing, which is not the last thing. We already did this. So if I ask you on a separate quiz to solve a quadratic, can you solve it? And the answer is, Maybe, yes, because you know that x equals negative b plus or minus the square roots of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you were doing 1i, for example, and you had that negative 6x squared, and look how I chose to write it from left to right. You know that a equals negative 6, b equals 4. 4, C equals to 5, and you know that X equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times negative 6 times 5, all divided by 2 times negative 6. And so you have X equals negative 4 plus or minus 16 negative four times negative six times five. That comes out to positive 120. Be careful with your signs. Divide that by negative 12. 
So this comes out to x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 136 all over negative 12. And now you just have to be careful when you wrap this up how you're going to do it, right? Like, just be careful. Um, you can try and reduce square root of 136 somehow. I mean, I think it comes out to 2 square root of 34. Check to see for me, please. Negative 4 plus 2 square root of 34 divided by negative 12, all of it by negative 12. I hate working with negatives. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. I mean, I don't like the denominator being negative. So, I mean, you can't just get rid of the negative, but you can treat it. Okay? So as long as, you, as, as you're sophisticated, that means if you multiply the denominator by negative 1, you have to multiply the numerator by negative 1. So this is going to be x equals 4. And the great thing about this is it doesn't matter because this stays the same. Because the plus becomes a minus and the minus becomes a plus, but they're both in there, so who cares? And so you just reduce this. Like, you know that. But you got to be careful, though. I, I would be careful. Because if you're not careful, you mess up. Because in reality, this is, this is 2 times 2 plus or minus the square root of 34 divided by 12. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful. And then you would say, oh, this is, this is 2 plus or minus the square root of 34 divided by 6. Or you can come here and you like when you get to this part here, you could go, oh, this is negative 4 uh, plus uh, negative 4 over 12 plus or minus 2 square root of 34 divided by 12. That's another way you could do it. You know? Or it's not negative. It's already at that point convert everything positive. So, and then you can work with that. They're both going to be equivalent, but they, they look slightly different, though. Like this, this will come out to like four thirds plus or minus, and then you have square root of 34 divided by six. But in reality, um, the book likes the first way, but in my hand, they, you, you're, you're not going to go through all this trouble. Oh, this is one third, sorry. One third. But it's it's the same thing here. This is this is two divided by six plus or minus the square root of thirty four over six. It's just we haven't we haven't gone to the next step and wrote one third plus or minus the square root of thirty four divided by six. You know, it's the same thing. Or the same thing. Same thing. Here. Guys, this is the best I can do for today. Let me go ahead and stop.